Today we're going to be talking about how to use the method of variation of parameters to solve a second order differential equation. And in this particular problem, we've been given the second order non-homogeneous differential equation of y double prime, or the second derivative of y, minus 2 times y prime, or the first derivative of y, plus y is equal to e to the x divided by x to the fourth. So variation of parameters is a method for finding the particular solution of a differential equation usually comes right after the method of undetermined coefficients. And variation of parameters, really all there is to it is three general steps. The first step is going to be to find the complementary solution. The second step is going to be to find the particular solution. And the third step will be to combine them or, or put them together, add them together. So the first thing we're going to do is find the complementary solution. Let me note one important thing. If we're going to use the formulas that I've written here, not so much the complementary solution formula, but the formula for the particular solution, it's really important that we have a coefficient of 1 in front of our second derivative of y term. If you don't have a coefficient of 1, just divide that coefficient through the left and right hand side to make the coefficient 1. And make sure you do that before you even get started with your problem because this formula won't work unless you have that coefficient of 1. So we do have a coefficient of 1, so we'll go ahead and get started with our complementary solution. And remember that to find the complementary solution, we're just going to turn the y's on the left-hand side into r. So because it's the second derivative of y, we have r squared minus 2 times r plus 1. And we'll set that equal to 0. We'll, we'll ignore the right-hand side of our equation for now. We'll set it equal to 0, and our goal is to solve for r. So in order to do that, we need to factor. We'll get r minus 1 times r minus 1 equals 0. And you can see that we have two solutions, but they are identical solutions. So it's really just the same solution of r equals 1, which is why we've written here this particular complementary solution formula, which is the formula for the complementary solution when you have equal real roots, right? You have two roots, but they are equal to one another. You have r sub 1 and r sub 1. They're equal. So we'll use that formula and we'll go ahead and write the complementary solution. So our complementary solution, when both of our roots are equal to 1, will be, and I'm just going to give us some space as we go because we'll need it, but the complementary solution will be c sub 1, which we always leave. We leave c sub 1 and c sub 2 alone. They're constants. e to the 1x, right? We'll be plugging in 1 for r sub 1. We don't need to write 1x, we'll just write x. Plus c sub 2, x again to the 1x, so we'll just write e to the x. All right, so this is our complementary solution. It's as easy as that. Uh, now we can move on to the particular solution. But there's a couple things that we need to do before we can start plugging things into our particular solution. Notice that we've got several components here that we don't know yet. First of all, we have y sub 1 written in here a couple times. We also have y sub 2 that's included in the formula a couple times. We have the Ronskian here of y sub 1, y sub 2, and we have g of x, none of which we've defined yet. So before we can go forward, we need to define those things. Well, y sub 1 is going to be really easy. It's just whatever is attached to c sub 1 in our complementary solution, but doesn't include c sub 1. So e to the x is multiplied by c sub 1. We're just going to leave that c sub 1 out and grab everything that's attached to it. y sub 2, similarly, will be everything that's attached to c sub 2, like this. So I'll grab that. We now have both of those. g of x is going to be the right-hand side of our original second-order differential equation up here. And remember that if you had to divide through to make the coefficient on the second derivative 1, it would include whatever manipulation was there. So that's going to be g of x. And then the Ronskian we're going to solve for right now using y sub 1 and y sub 2. So our Ronskian is going to be equal to, and we'll draw a matrix here. What we're going to do is we're going to put y sub 1 and y sub 2 in here in the first row, so y sub 1, e to the x, and y sub 2, x, e to the x. Then in the second row, 
we're going to take their derivatives. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Over here, the derivative will be e to the x plus x e to the x, which we use product rule to find. So those are our derivatives, and now our Ronskian will be this uh, first term here times the fourth term here. So we'll multiply those together and we'll get e to the x times e to the x plus x e to the x. And then we'll subtract whatever we get when we multiply these other two together, right? And we're multiplying on the diagonal. So we'll get here e to the x times x e to the x. And it's as simple as that. Just remember that you're multiplying first this way, then subtracting, then multiplying this way. Those are really the three things that you have to remember with the Ronskian. So now all we have to do is simplify this as much as possible to find the Ronskian that we're going to plug into the formula for our particular solution. So e to the x times e to the x will give us e to the 2x plus x e to the 2x minus x e to the 2x. So as you can see, the second and third term here are going to cancel, and we're just left with e to the 2x. So that's going to be our, our round scheme. So now we've got all four components, and we can go ahead and plug those in to the formula for our particular solution. So y sub p for particular of x will be equal to, don't forget to include this negative sign, it's really important. So we have the negative sign, and then y sub 1, which we already know to be e to the x, times the integral of y sub 2, so x e to the x, times g of x, e to the x divided by x to the fourth, all divided by the Ronskian, which we know is e to the 2x dx. And then our second integral here is going to end up looking similar. We just have y sub 2 on the outside times the integral of y sub 1, so e to the x, and then the right-hand side of our original differential equation, all divided by the Ronskian, e to the 2x dx. So that's it. We just plug in all of these components to our particular solution formula, and now it's just a matter of simplification. So let's start looking at a couple of these things. This is going to simplify for us fairly quickly. First of all, we can see here in the numerator of our first integral, we have e to the x times e to the x, which we know will become e to the 2x. Those are in the, the numerator of our fraction here, and we also have an e to the 2x in our denominator, so those three will cancel with one another. We can see over here in the second integral that we have the same thing. We have e to the x times e to the x in the numerator, which will give us e to the 2x in the numerator, which will cancel with e to the 2x in the denominator. So those three are going to go away. You can also see that in our first integral we have x in the numerator and x to the fourth in the denominator. So this x is going to go away and we're going to be left with x to the third power here. We'll write this out again in a second. But x to the third power, you can see in the second integral we're just going to be left with x to the fourth. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit y the particular is equal to negative e to the x times the integral of 1 over x cubed, everything else canceled, dx plus x e to the x times the integral of 1 over x to the fourth dx. What I'd like to do at this point is change those 1 over x cubed and 1 over x to the fourth into negative exponents. Remember that we can move these to the top and just make the exponents negative and that'll make our integration really easy. So the particular solution is negative e to the x times the integral of x to the negative 3 dx plus x e to the x times the integral of x to the negative 4 dx. Okay. So now we can go ahead and integrate really easily. So we have negative e to the x times 1 over negative 2 x to the negative 2 plus x e to the x times 1 over negative 3 x to the negative 3. One thing I want to note at this point, 
Uh, normally when you take an integral, remember that you have to add the constant of integration, right? You always integrate and then you add a plus c to account for that um, constant that could have been there. Well, in this particular method, when we're using variation of parameters and this solution or this uh, formula for the particular solution, you actually don't have to add the constant of integration because when you go and put this particular solution back with the complementary solution, those constants just end up canceling. I'm not going to spend time in this video proving uh, how they cancel, but needless to say, they'll cancel out every time, so you don't need to include them unless your professor specifically asks you to uh, include them because they'll go away in the end. Okay, so now you can see that we've got a negative sign here and a negative sign here that will cancel each other out and become positive. This x to the negative 2 is going to move to the denominator and become x to the positive 2 in the denominator. So we'll just be left with e to the x over 2x squared. Then over here in our second term, we'll have, oh, we have a negative sign there in our denominator. So we'll say, we'll say minus, and then we'll have x e to the x in the numerator, all divided by 3x cubed, because this x cubed moves to the denominator as well. So there's a couple things here we can do to simplify. First of all, we can cancel this x, and this will become x squared. So let's go ahead and write that out. e to the x over 2x squared minus e to the x over 3x squared. And now we could find a uh, common denominator, and I'm actually just going to factor out the e to the x over x squared so we can see what that looks like. If I factor out an e to the x over, oh sorry, this is this was supposed to be a x squared here. If I factor out that x squared, then we'll have one half minus one third. One half minus one third is just going to become one sixth. So that means that our final answer for the particular solution here is e to the x over 6x squared. So now that we have our particular solution, remember our steps where find the complementary solution, find the particular solution, and then put them together. So now we've got both, and we just need to go ahead and put them together. And we'll do that over here. So our final answer, which we'll call uh, y of x, is just going to be our complementary solution, so c sub 1 e to the x plus c sub 2 x e to the x, and then we just add to that our particular solution, which we have down here, as e to the x over 6x squared. And that's it. That's our final answer. So I hope that video helped you guys, and I will see you in the next one.